The DAIPP registry, which stands for Defibrillator Automatique Implantable en Prévention Primaire, it's a registry which was conducted in France. And basically, from 2002 to 2012, they've included patients for 12 centers, which were spread all around the country, going from locations like Paris to Toulouse, Rennes, uh, also to Bordeaux and Nancy. So it covered most of the country. And uh, during that time period, they included all patients implanted in primary prevention with ICDs. So all patients implanted with an ICD to prevent their first episode of sudden cardiac death or severe malignant sustained arrhythmia. Basically, patients required, besides being a primary prevention, they also required to have either ischemic or non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, and they had to be aged over 18. So th those were the inclusion criteria which were quite broad. And the reason why this was uh, design was that at the time, around 2002, there was still not a lot of support for, for this type of practice. So they just wanted to conduct an observational study to see what really happens. And they were able to include around 5,500 patients, which was quite a large cohort at the time. Nowadays we have larger registries from the US, but done in a, in a different way. Basically, there were 12 centers, as I said before, and each center had their main investigator, which was, who was in charge of data collection. And then afterwards, those data would be exported to a main core center in Paris, in the so-called INSERM, which is a, an institute for research, which has got some people there, a branch involved in cardiovascular research. And then they process all the data. And basically, the DAIPP registry was coordinated by a steering committee, composed of five people, which are Serge Boveda, uh, Christophe Leclerc, Elwa Marijon, Nicolas Sadoul, and also uh, Pascal Defy. So basically comprising five different cities which play the major, uh, major role in, in this registry. The registry produced several papers. I think around currently around nine papers, and there are still some other papers which combine data from other registries. But the women's sub-analysis produce, produce some interesting findings that confirm uh, previous observations from uh, a North American uh, registry. Some of the, our findings confirm those observations, some are contradictory. So in some, they show that women respond differently to ICD therapy. For example, women seem to have a higher mortality from cardiovascular causes if we assess the group of women implanted with single and dual chamber ICDs. Why this happens, well, we don't know. Probably they present with a more aggressive form of heart failure. If we look only to women implanted with CRTs, we see that CRTDs, we see that they have a lower mortality. So this seems a little bit like a paradox, but there seem to be data suggesting that women respond better to CRTs. Why does it happen? Are, is this just genetic factors, hormonal factors, behavioral factors, or is it just that electrical, uh, on an electrophysiologic basis, they present with more severe degrees of, of electrical dysynchrony? We do not really know, but this seems to, be, to constitute a support for more and more referring women for this therapy, because probably the most important finding of the registry was that women were underrepresented in patients implanting with ICDs. So only 15% of patients in our courts were women. And the reason why we performed this analysis was also because of that. In the major RCTs which provided support for primary prevention indication of ICDs, women also were also underrepresented. So we ended up using and creating guidelines based on that data obtained from men and applying them to women. And by using this registry, we can clearly prove that women are a different population. They have a strong, uh, more pronounced benefit from CRTDs, that we know for sure. For some reason, they do not, they do, not do as well with ICDs. There seems to be, it's a non-significant pateralis, there seems to be a weak trend for having less appropriate therapies. So for some reason, women are less prone to develop arrhythmias. But on the other hand, they are really clearly better responders to CRT therapy. So they should be clearly candidates for this intervention. I think this registry is hypothesis generating. What we know is that from large epidemiological studies that sometimes you end up with unexpected findings and then you go back into basic fundamental science. So why do women respond differently? We're now living the era, the era of genomics, omics. Is it something, some form of molecule that they have in their circulation or some type of gene that makes them more 
able or more prone to respond to this therapy? Why do they have this type of different behavior? So now we, with the advent of big data, with hundreds of thousands of patients, we can try and identify if all women respond equally or even if for women you have specific subsets of women from different races or just with different genotypes. And then by doing those steps, so here we just made a very broad step, but then if you do those precise steps, you can probably identify the reason why. And when you identify the reason why, is it a specific receptor, a specific molecule, you can develop a drug aiming for that target, and then you can extrapolate the same benefits to the male population, and even for women, you can increase the type of benefit they have. So basically, start from a long po uh, big population, then you end up with a pathway which can possibly improve the overall survival and save lives.